Howdy folks, this is Justro at Matt Calf Mills bringing you Story Time Tuesday. I got a good one today. I'm going to go into detail about the water mill that I built. I showed a video a while back of the, the water, water wheels and water mill that I built, but on this one I'm going to go into more detail and tell you about the details of it. I hope you enjoy it. In 2012, I got asked if I would build a water mill and wound up getting commissioned to do that. And the way it started out, I was over at a friend's house and there's some other people there and uh, this fellow was there and you know, he's just talking like people do. And he said, uh, somehow he made a comment about what are we going to do if everything goes to hell in a handbasket or something like that, he said. And I said to comment, I guess we'll put us up a water wheel over at your place and start grinding corn. And the next time I seen that man, he was wanting to know where he could get a water wheel and who could put it up and set him up to grind some cornmeal. So I had a water wheel and an old mill that I had traded for and the mill was all ruined and gone and collapsed and about rotted down and everything else. But the water wheel was steel and the, the, the frame of the water wheel, the shaft and the spokes was there. All the buckets around the outside was you know, sheet metal, and they'd, most of them had rusted out. There wasn't nothing left, but the water wheel was still good, and uh, I sold him that water wheel, and I took that thing down. It was a 16-foot Fitz wheel, and I took that thing down, and I had to cut it apart, the bolts I had to cut off with a, with a torch because there's uh, so much rust on the outside, I couldn't get them off any other way, but... I cut the bolts and drove them out with a hammer and a punch and that water wheel come apart. <clears throat> and it had a big old shaft about three inches diameter. And, uh, well, actually it was a four inch diameter shaft. That's what it was. And, uh, the way they done them fits wheels, the big old shaft had cast hubs on it and the hubs had notches where the spokes would fit in and bolt together. And to keep things from getting confusing, they would, I guess they built these wheels at the factory and got everything set up and then they took them apart and shipped them on the train to wherever they was going. To keep it from getting confusing, on the inside of the hubs and on the on the bottom of the spokes, they would stamp. On one side, they stamped Roman numerals for the spoke number. And then on the other side of the wheel, they stamped dots. So one side, it was Roman numerals 1 through 8. This number one spoke could have a one, and right there on that hub in the spot it went, have a one. And on the other side, one dot, and then one dot on the hub, all the way through one through eight. That's how they, that told them which spoke went where, and it also told them side to side which side it went on. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't know until I started taking that thing down, and I, was, I seen that, I found that on there, and I, I, I knew how they had done that, so it was real, real smart and real interesting. But I took a wheel down, and a big old 16-foot water wheel, time you take it down, you can load it on the back of a little old pickup truck. The biggest thing is the shaft. I left the hubs on the shaft, and uh, that thing was awful heavy. It was really heavy. And, uh, but the spokes and everything, just a little old stack of metal 
for a big old water wheel. I mean, there wasn't much to it when you took it down. And I got that thing out of there, and I took it to a place up in Asheville, and I had them to sandblast it all. And then I had them to paint it with some good paint. Painted it dark green colored, like forest green colored. And I brought it over, and when I started building this mill, I picked out the spot there down below his house, down below his pond. I picked out the spot, tried to judge it, everything for like where the sun comes up and where it shines. You want your water wheel, especially if it's an all wood wheel. You want it to get an equal amount of sunshine. You don't want half of the wheel of getting sunshine and the other half of the wheel of not getting sunshine because what it'll do, the half that's getting the sunshine will dry out and the half that ain't getting the sunshine will be heavier because it stays wetter. And you'll get a wheel that's unbalanced and that's just a... That's aggravating when you got an unbalanced water wheel. You can't run smooth, nothing else works right. So you have to take into account a lot of things. And when I started this project, I was about 20, I think I just turned, I might have been getting close to 28 years old when I took this project on. And I... You know, I built water wheels and played in the creek all my life, but I'd never got to do... This was a dream come true to be able to build a water mill from the ground up. And it was just an experience and a lot of fun. And when I picked out the spot for this water mill and tried to think it through everything and shoot elevation on the pond and how much head you're going to have on the water. That's fall. You know, your water has to be so high above your water wheel to have enough fall to make everything work right. Had to figure all that out. And then you had to get down in the creek. And I dug out right beside of the stream there. I dug out a big old, a big old footer for this big old wheelhouse and these, these carrier pillars to carry this water wheel. So I dug out down in the creek bed and I, I poured a big old footer. It's probably 18 inches thick and plenty long enough to carry the, this water wheel. You know, it needs to be about as long as the water wheel is to make it to where it ain't, it's good and stable. And after I poured that big footer down there, I formed up a big old pillar on one side out of, I formed it up with lumber and I formed it kind of wide at the base and it tapered in at the top. And then on the other side, I formed up a big old, a lot bigger pillar, like a wall almost. And so if you've got outside here, <clears throat> you got your one, pillar for your water wheel on the very outside. Well, on the other side of your water wheel over here, I formed up a wall that went on down there about to the end of the water wheel. So you had a little pillar on the outside and you had a big wall on the inside where the mill was, where the mill building started. You had a big wall. And the purpose of that was on top of these pillars, I sawed out some big old chestnut oak timbers, 18 inches by 18 inches square. And it took me two months to find the oak log to do that. I couldn't find a log big enough to square up 18 by 18. Finally found one. A buddy of mine at log some, he found me one and I went and got it. It's a big old chestnut oak and I sawed that thing out on my sawmill and it got two big beams, 18 inches by 18 inches square. Now that's a big beam and when it's oak, it is heavy. In the top of these pillars, I stubbed up big old inch anchor bolts. 
I took a piece of threaded rod, I think it's probably three foot long, and I put me a nut on the bottom of that rod up so far, and then I put me a big old washer, and then I put another nut, and I put that down in that pillar, and I left enough of the bolt sticking up down in the concrete when I poured the two pillars, I put that bolt down in the concrete and let it stick up high enough to come up. It seems like I stubbed it out of the concrete 18 inches. The thickness of the pier, the, the uh, beam, the chestnut oak beam, so that the bolt wouldn't be sticking up in the way because on the top of that oak beam, you, you, you have to be able to adjust that water wheel and get it exactly where you want it, and you don't want something sticking up in the way. So I think I run them flush with the top of that beam, if I remember right. I think that's what I done. And on the pillar on the outside over there, I put a short carrier beam there. And then on that big wall over there at the mill, I put a big old long carrier beam. And the purpose of that was on that wooden carrier beam is where the bearings for that water wheel set down one on each side. And <clears throat> the bearings, the old bearings that went with that, they was bronze lined. They had a bronze bushing inside of them friction bearings and that shaft just turned and they had big old oil reservoirs on top of the bearing with you put a cotton wick in there, like on these corn mills I work on and stuff, and it lets that oil just drip. And it keeps that shaft lubed so it can turn freely. Well, I set it up with them old bearings first. And on that long wall beam next to the mill house building, down on that other end down there is where you put the big bearing for the, the jack shaft and the pinion wheel, because this water wheel was 16 foot in diameter, but you had a 14 foot diameter segment gear that bolted on the inside side of the water wheel, like the water wheel's here, and your mill house is here. Well, that segment gear bolted on this side of the spokes on the water wheel. And the purpose of that was... When that water wheel turned, you got a big gear reduction right off of the bat. So you got this big 14-inch segment gear on the outside of the spokes on that water wheel. And then you got an 18-inch pinion gear down here that's on that end of that jack shaft. The jack shaft goes in the mill inside the building. And that little 18-inch pinion gear meshed with that big 14 14 foot segment gear on the water wheel so when that water wheel turned it would drive that jack shaft at a lot higher speed and you run your water wheel slower see so the water wheel runs slower and that jack shaft just is getting it you know as that big ring gear is turning that pinion that big gear reduction so the jack shaft when it come inside the mill it had a big old eight foot wooden cased pulley this thing was eight foot in diameter wooden pulley and it went with that water wheel it was on that side of that old mill and it was okay it hadn't got no weather on it and hadn't rotted they might have been a little spot or two that was bad but i fixed that i repaired it patched it and fixed it but the way i done that the floor was just above that big carrier beam that carried the water wheel bearings and the jack shaft bearings. And then I come over in the middle of the mill house and I built another big pier in the basement. It had a carrier block on top of it that carried the other end of that jack shaft. And the floor there, the floor had a hole in it and that, that master wheel which is on the jack shaft, that big eight foot wooden master wheel. Half of it was above floor level upstairs on the milling floor and half of it was down in the basement. So when you turn the water on that water wheel, that big old wheel would turn and half of it would be coming upstairs and you could see it there, four foot sticking up out of the floor, a turning when that thing was running. It was really neat how it worked. And 
on them barons, the old bronze lines barons I was telling you about, I'd have to get a, when I got this all put together and working, I'd have to get up there, and it, it took a five-gallon bucket of water. I'd have to reach up there with a five-gallon bucket of water and pour it on this water wheel to get it to move, start moving. There's a lot of friction in them old bronze barons, and they was wore pretty bad, too, and that didn't help nothing. But it took a five-gallon bucket of water to get that water wheel to start turning. So, I seen that wasn't going to be too ideal. And we ordered some big old pillar block bearings for this water wheel. Big old four-inch pillar block bearings. And I had to change them out on that water wheel. So, I had to jack up. That whole water wheel, shaft and all, and take the old bearings off, put the new bearings on, and set it back down. And that was a pretty good little job in itself. But what I wanted to get to before I get ahead of myself, I wanted to tell you, on the outside of the water wheel where that metal I told you was all rusted out and no good, I went down to Gainesville, Florida, and I got a load of red cypress, lum red cypress lumber. I called them, and I told them what I needed, big old wide boards, so you could get that radius cut on the outside of that water wheel. You had a big radius between them spokes that you had to cut, and it took a wide board to be able to make that radius. And I took one of my band saws and... By this time, the build, I'd got the building built, and I set up one of my band saws on the inside of that building, and I made me a jig so that I could cut all of them rim boards for that water wheel, them rounded radius boards. I set up and cut them all, and uh, they all worked, you know. I, I cut them out the radius, and then I was able to go back and fit each piece in like it went. And it was a, a double-rimmed water wheel, which means the spokes, they had a rim board, a rounded board that went from spoke to spoke. But inside of that rounded board, I had a two-inch board, a two-inch uh, rim board that went in there. And the rim boards that was attached to the spokes... They broke on every spoke, meaning that was the end of that board at every spoke. It centered on each spoke. Well, on the inside rim boards, I broke the, I put the break in the center of those outside, those outside rim boards so that, and I glued it all together and, and bolted it together so that when that thing was done, it was like two solid rings because where the rim boards crossed, there was no break. It was all overlapped, so it was like two solid rings going all the way around this water wheel, and it made it real strong. And I stood over there for, I forget how, how long it was. I think it was, I stood there at the base of that water wheel, I think three days, doing nothing but just cutting them notches and laying them out. And I've got a traveler wheel down there at the shop. I'm going to show you, maybe Friday, I'll show you that traveler wheel. That's what I use to measure around this water wheel. Now, it's a 16-foot diameter water wheel, and I had to measure around it because I had to lay out them buckets. And I had to get them as evenly spaced as I could. So I made one big round around that water wheel with that traveler wheel, and it was 50 four feet around that water wheel all the way around it 54 feet so i got that measurement and then i divided that with how many buckets i needed and so i divided that with how many buckets i needed and i think it was like 48 buckets with the spacing I had on them and the way I notched them, I needed like 48 buckets around this wheel. So then I had to go back or I had to figure that up, the exact measurements, space between each bucket, 
had to go all the way back around with that traveler and I think the first time I done it, I was like an inch and a half. Like when I started with a bucket here and laid out each bucket all the way around, when I got back around to that first bucket, I was an inch and a half off from what I wanted to be. So I had to make adjustments in the measurements and start all over again and start and go all the way back around again laying these buckets out. And that next time, I was within... I think I was within three sixteenths of an inch when I laid the first one out and I went all the way around. I think I was within three sixteenths of an inch, which is just almost nothing when it comes to something that big. And uh, I went with that and I laid out all the buckets and I, I notched all the, the bucket boards in, the fronts and the bottoms. I notched them all into those rim boards on the side so that Everything fit together real tight. And I glued it and bolted it all together, and then I sealed it real good with some good water sealer. And it was a real beautiful, nice water wheel, and it didn't take no water. It would stay dry, wouldn't get out of balance. It worked real good. But what I was going to tell you now about them barons, them first old barons, it would take a five-gallon bucket of water. You'd have to pour a five-gallon bucket on there to get that water wheel to turn and to get it to move. Well, after I replaced them old bronze bearings with them new pillar block bearings, I run a, a garden hose from up at his pond down to the water wheel and up on top of it, and it was just a siphoning. That, that garden hose was siphoning out of his pond and coming down there. And it was just running a little bitty stream real slow because it was just a siphon. It wasn't a real steady flow. And I put that water hose up there falling on that water wheel. In just a minute, that water wheel started turning. With a little teeny stream of water, it wasn't as big as your pinky. Well, it wasn't as big as my pinky. But that's that's a difference them new bearings made, them new seal bearings made in that water wheel versus them old bronze line bearings. And I thought that was real interesting. What a difference that made. I think I'm going to close this story time here, make this part one of building this water mill, and next Tuesday I'll... I'll tell you some more about it, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed sharing it with you. It's good to think about all this again and remember it because it was a dream come true to get to build it. And I look forward to telling you about the rest of this water mill that I built. And I'll show you some pictures along too of different things that I've got. This is Justro at Metcalf Mills. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you will. Subscribe to my channel if you ain't already. I look forward to seeing you next time.